slowly rotating at the edge of deep space, 1,000 kilometers beyond the atmosphere of 21st century Earth, is the Arthur C. Clarke Astronomical Observatory, Star Lab. Here, Star Lab Research Director Maura Cassidy and scientists and technicians of the International Space Authority watch over the countless stars and planets that fill the silent distances beyond the giant space station. This week, Captain Buddy Griff and Star Lab librarian Ingrid Tassel discover the ultimate sideshow attraction in the circus of their minds when they encounter the Madonnas of Zanzibar Alpha on Alien Worlds. <laughs> This is Star Lab. Go ahead, Lunar Base 14. Jerry, it's Frank Patterson. Is our shuttle still there? Uh, yes, it is. When is it due to launch? In about 20 minutes. It's still being loaded. Okay, can you pass me through to the pilot? Uh, we need some hydroponic nutrient tubing, and I forgot to put it on its supply list. <laughs> no problem, Frank. I'll switch you over. This is Star Lab. Go ahead, Serendipity One. This is the amazing Daphne, full-time tattooed lady and part-time shuttle pilot for Otto Starshine's Interplanetary Carnival of Thrillin' Wombos. Currently presented six shows a day on the circus planet of Barnum 5. Admission six platinum dollars, life on under 12, free. <laughs> Sounds like a barrel of fun, Daphne. What can I do for you? I have a package for SCT Captain Buddy Griff. Uh, what's your Star Lab ETA? Seven minutes and 22 seconds. Seven plus 22, roger. Okay, Serendipity One, I have you on the screen. <laughs> That's some paint job you've got there, Daphne. I've never seen a day glow rainbow shuttle before. Part of the image, kid. Part of the image. And a thrilling wonder it is, too. Uh, your docking orbit insertion coordinates are 503 at 20 Alpha, docking bay 7. Thanks, pal. Oh, uh, remind me to give you a couple of free tickets. Serendipity 1, out. Star Lab, clear. Well, it, it seems to me that in order to project the astral body, the person first has to visualize being outside himself. He has to actually see his etheric body while he's still in his physical body. Oh, I don't know, John. What is there about the real or imagined presence of the... Uh, what's that German word for etheric double, Mora? Doppelganger. Yeah, doppelganger. Great word. Why is it necessary to visualize the doppelganger first? I mean, if that's essential. How do you explain the fact that people have out-of-body experiences while they're asleep? Maybe it's because when you sleep, you dream. And I'm oversimplifying this now, but aren't dreams unconscious visualizations of places you've been or places you want to be? I never thought of that. I guess that's a possibility. So maybe you're both right. Excuse me, Dr. Cassidy. What is it, Patrick? There's someone here from Barnum 5 to see Captain Griff. Daphne? Hello, buddy, you old roustabout. Are you deaf? My gosh. Maura. I'm sorry, I think nothing of it, doll face. Tattooed ladies are supposed to give you the shivers and make your eyes pop. That's what we get paid for. Uh, Daphne, this is Maura Cassidy, Star Lab's research director. Glad to know you, Maura. Hello? And this is my good friend, John Graydon. Put her there, Johnny. Any friend of Buddy's is a pal of mine. I've heard a lot about you, Daphne. Well, anything this beanpole told you about me, you gotta take with a grain of salt. Or maybe with a grain of pepper if you like your story sparsy. <laughs> uh, Buddy, I didn't know that you knew any tattooed ladies. Why, well, hell's bells, Ma. Me and the kid have known each other for years. Well, when he was just a squirt, he used to spend half the summer following Otto's carnival around. How is Otto, anyway? 
Bunny, he couldn't be better. Going interplanetary was the smartest thing he ever did. Why, we got more attractions and menageries than you can shake a stick at. And Otto's got one whole shuttle stuffed with mattresses. Just so he can store his money. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, D- Daphne, could, could I ask you a personal question? Far away, Johnny. Uh, well, are you, a, you know, tattooed all over? Oh, why, well, heck yes, sugar. I even got tattoos on the bottom of my feet. Want to see? Well, no. Um, I mean, if you don't want to. Oh, no trouble at all, Johnny. Happy to oblige. Here, buddy, help me off with these clod hoppers. Okay, here, give me your foot. Oh, oh, there, what do you think of that? Oh, fantastic. What's that there, Daphne? A white rabbit? A white rabbit? A mad hatter? A queen of hearts, twiddly dee, twiddly dumb? Oh, heck, Mara, I got the whole story of Alice in Wonderland tattooed on the bottom of these babies. Daphne, did you have all these tattoos when you joined the circus? Nope. It was just my arms at first. Uh, Money here gave me the idea of getting tattooed from face to feet. He did? Yeah. The first summer he came around, he was reading this Ray Bradbury novel, The Illustrated Man. Well, I took a gander at the cover and decided then and there that anything an illustrated man had to say... An illustrated woman could say ten times better. (laughs) Arriving at Star Lab from the circus planet of Barnum 5, the amazing Daphne... A tattooed lady from Otto Starshine's interplanetary carnival of thrilling wonders is reunited with her old friend, Buddy Griff. Uh, Buddy, I didn't know that you knew any tattooed ladies. Why, well, hell's bells, Ma. Me and the kid have known each other for years. Well, when he was just a squirt, he used to spend half the summer following Otto's carnival around. How is Otto, anyway? Buddy, he couldn't be better. Going interplanetary was the smartest thing he ever did. Why, we got more attractions and menageries than you can shake a stick at. And Otto's got one whole shuttle stuffed with mattresses. Just so he can store his money. (laughs) Half an hour later, Maura, John, Buddy, and the amazing Daphne enter Star Lab's visual media theater to view a videotape cassette Daphne has brought from Barnum 5. that. My dear's going punky on me. I was wondering about the cassette. Oh, that. Well, when Otto got Buddy's message about coming to Bonham 5, he rounded up a bunch of our Ballyhoo boys and had them put together this little video tour of the grounds. Sort of a preview of coming attractions. Well, that was nice of him. Otto's always doing stuff like that, Ma. Figured Buddy'd get a kick out of it. I love it. Well, I guess we should sit down, huh? Yeah. Maura, where would you like to sit? Well, I'd like a seat on the aisle. Well, I don't know. I like sitting in the middle, up close. John? Uh, (laughs) Why don't we sit over there next to the console? I think Johnny's got a good point there. If we sit by the console, we can change focus and resolution and color correct if we have to. Okay, right you are. Hand me the cassette, buddy. Here you go. Okay, Johnny, let her rip. Oh, <laughs> 
Hey, 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 I've never seen show. anything like that. <laughs> Here from the planet Oz, his glamorous wonder, the Torsak woman. Watch her now as she puts her mammoth Torsak through their faces. She looks pretty mean to me. <laughs> and now, from one of her, the fabulous flying ballooning, an aggregation of death defying aerialists, so clever and accomplished, their safety net is 58 feet above them. He's Way gotta be kidding. Men. They fall up. And here from Auto Starshine, it's a Stella Menagerie, a Lavinian confusion creature. Notice the tail at both ends. Hence, the name Confusion Creature. <laughs> The strongest life form this side of Callisto from the planet of Bicep 9, the one, the only, Giacomo the Magnificent. Watch now as Giacomo attempts to lift a fully loaded lunar shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Here is one of our animal attractions from planet Earth. A quartet of tap dancing kangaroos. Hit it, boy. Got again. <laughs> Where did those guys go? And now... For your delight and satisfaction, glean the fire-breathing fish person of this most age. Glean, who has extinguished himself in over 7,000 performances. <laughs> I'd uh, like to hang around and shoot the breeze, but I got a show this afternoon, and I don't believe in keeping the customers waiting. Um, Daphne, before you go, would you mind coming down to the infirmary with me? The infirmary? How come? Well, you mentioned that your left ear was going a little punky. I think Dr. Rossiter should examine it. There might be something she can do. Gee, that's really swell of you, Maura, but I'll be all right. Hey, Maura's right, Daphne. It wouldn't hurt to have it checked out. Besides, I think you and Dr. Rossiter would really hit it off. Well, okay. Good, I'll talk to you before you go. If anybody wants me, I'll be in the library. Checking out a book? Nope. Checking out a librarian. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> so long, buddy. Come on, I'll go down to the infirmary with you. Uh, maybe I can get Daphne to tell me some of her spicier stories. Glad to oblige, Johnny. A man who listens is a good man indeed. And these days... A good man is hard to find. <laughs> Nobody here. What? Oh! <laughs> How long have you had your nose in that book? Well, let me see. I came on duty at 0800, and it's nearly... <gasps> My goodness, I've been reading for almost four hours. <laughs> what are you reading? A history of circuses and carnivals. Oh, let me see that. 
Hey, this is great. Well, since we are going to Barnum 5 tomorrow, and because Daphne and Otto are such good friends to you, I thought it would be nice if I could talk circus talk with them. Well, people like it very much when you take an interest in their profession, don't you think? Yes, they like it very much. I hope the weather is nice tomorrow on Barnum 5. It would be too bad if there was Jonah's luck. Jonah's luck? It's circus talk for rainy weather. I know. But how did you know? Oh, there's a glossary of circus language here in the back of the book. I've memorized it. Oh, you have? Mm-hmm. Okay, close the book. Now, let's see. There's a heavy clem coming down behind a Mitchell involving a razorback, a joey, and a spindle man. The clem is happening because they all have eyes for the same Sally Kinker. Oh, that's easy. A man who loves the animals, a clown, and a gambler are having a fight behind the fortune teller's tent because they all want the same lady acrobat. <laughs> Kiss me, you fool. Okay. Two hours after her arrival at Star Lab from the circus planet of Barnum 5, the amazing Daphne complains of a hearing loss in her left ear and is taken to the infirmary by Maura and John. Hello, Dr. Cassidy, Captain Graydon. Hi, Maddie. Hi there, Maddie. Hello, Daphne. Well, how about that? The kid knows me. <laughs> News travels pretty fast around here, Daphne. Uh, do you want to see Dr. Rossiter? Mm -hmm. She's not too busy. She's in her office. Come on. An hour later, Daphne and Maura leave the infirmary, take a lift to Star Lab's third level, and enter the giant space station's main dining room. Hi, buddy. Hey, Dr. Hi, Maura. Daphne. Hi, honey. How'd it go? Well, it looks like I'm not going deaf after all. I got a cracked eardrum, but Diana gave me some medicine for it. Says if I use it twice a day for two weeks, a crack will heal up, and hey, I'll be as good as new. Oh, good. Great. Oh, Daphne, this is Ingrid. She'll be coming to Barnum 5 with me tomorrow. Glad to know you, Ingrid. Hello, Daphne. Buddy's told me so much about you that it's nice to finally see you, uh, in the flesh. Yeah, well, uh... I'm happy to say there's a lot of flesh to see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's John? He's still down in the infirmary. There's something wrong with him? Mm, nothing a Sunday afternoon with Maddie won't cure. Yeah, well, I guess my spicy story has finally got to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, will you have lunch with us, Daphne? I'd really love to, honey, but uh, i got to be getting back. Here's a couple of Annie Oakleys, buddy. I'll flash them at the gate tomorrow, and one of the boys will take you right to Otto. Annie Oakleys? Uh, oh, that, that circus talk for free tickets. Me. Oh, <laughs> well, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Daphne. We'll walk you down to your docking bay. <clears throat> At 0800 the next morning, Buddy and Ingrid enter Launch Bay 12 and board the bright yellow Marathon Alpha, one of Star Lab's Magnum class long range shuttles. Fifteen minutes later, the Marathon Alpha rockets out of its launch bay, banks 40 degrees, and jets away toward Barnum 5. Meanwhile, on the morning side of the small circus planet, Otto Starshine and the amazing Daphne stand on the midway of Otto's interplanetary carnival of thrilling wonders, watching the gaffers, roustabouts, kinkers, and razorbacks Prepare for another day-long performance. Well, there will be no Jonah's luck today, Daphne. The sky is beautiful. Yeah, it's gonna be a swell day, all right. Say, are we gonna head with what we talked about last night? The fourth ring? Mm. Yes, it's a wonderful idea, but it requires a good deal of preparation. So we had better take Buddy and Ingrid to Madame Disha the moment they arrive. Gotcha. No, Disha. Gotcha. Oh, by the way, what was all that commotion last night? One of glamorous wonders, mammoth tool sacks got loose and had all three of its trunks draped over the counter of Devo's starflower stand. For a minute there, 
Beetle thought it was going to sniff him right out of business. <laughs> <laughs> Did you speak to Wanda about it? I mentioned it to her this morning, but she was so busy making herself glamorous, I don't think she heard me. <laughs> she never changes, does she? You know something, Otto? I hope she never does. She's tough girl just the way she is. <laughs> Come, let's go see Madame Disha. Gotcha. No, Disha. Uh, Marathon Alpha to Barnum 5 Traffic Control. Uh, yo, we're cracking you, Marathon Alpha. I need landing vector coordinates for Otto Starshine's Carnival of Thrilling Wonders. Coming right up. Now, nah, right, is your ship outfitted with a GC-10 interface module? Affirmative. All right, uh, terminate your onboard guidance system and open interface channel 105. We'll launch you from here. Roger. Okay, Marathon Alpha, we have you on ground control interlock. Have a good time. Thanks. Marathon Alpha out. Well, how do I look? <laughs> Buddy, close your mouth. Ah, uh, I didn't know you were uh, changing your clothes back there. Oh, the way I look doesn't make you uncomfortable, does it? Uh, no. Little tiny skirts and little tiny tops don't make me uncomfortable. No. Yes, yes, they do make me uncomfortable. Do you want me to change? No, no, no. I, I like being uncomfortable. Really, I do. I love it. Good. I think it's a perfect costume for a day at the circus. Circus? Oh, yeah, the circus. Oh, sure, it's perfect for a day at the circus. Or a night at the opera. Or a day at the races. Two hours after leaving Star Lab, the Marathon Alpha lands at the small spaceport near Otto Starshine's Carnival of Thrilling Wonders. Fifteen minutes later, Buddy and Ingrid flash their Annie Oakleys at the main gate of the Carnival grounds and are escorted down the midway to Otto's office, a large red and gold circus wagon surrounded by long neon flagpoles that fly the multicolored banners and pennants of 20 alien worlds. Hey, hi, hello. Hello, hello, buddy. buddy. Hi, you Ken. look great, Otto. Just great. <laughs> well, it's been a long time, buddy. Too long. My advice is that you begin coming to my circus at least once a year rather than once every decade. Will you promise me that? You got it, Otto. That's a promise. And, uh... Who is your charming companion? Oh, this is Ingrid Tassel. She's the librarian aboard Starlight. Well, I must say that the image of the librarian has changed considerably since I was a boy. It's a pleasure to meet you, my dear. Thank you, Otto. Well, what do you two think of the place so far? Oh, oh it's, it's terrific. Wonderful. I can't oh, get over it. Excellent. Glad to hear it, kids. Glad to hear it. But if you think what you've seen so far is terrific, prepare yourselves for lots more. Because you ain't seen nothing yet. Last week's episode began when the Serendipity One, an incoming shuttle from the circus planet of Barnum 5, radioed Star Lab Control. This is Star Lab. Go ahead, Serendipity One. This is the amazing Daphne, full-time tattooed lady and part-time shuttle pilot for Otto Starshine's Interplanetary Carnival of Thrilling Wonders. I have a package for SCT Captain Buddy Griff. Personal. From Otto himself. Okay, Serendipity One, I have you on the screen. Uh, your docking orbit insertion coordinates are 503 at 20 Alpha, docking bay 7. Half an hour later, the amazing Daphne is reunited with her old friend Buddy Griff, who introduces her to Maura and John Graydon. Glad to know you, Maury. Put her there, Johnny. Any friend of Buddy's is a pal of mine. I've heard a lot about you, Daphne. Uh, Buddy, I didn't know that you knew any tattooed ladies. Me and the kid have known each other for years. Well, when he was just a squirt, he used to spend half the summer following Otto's carnival around. How is Otto, anyway? Buddy, he couldn't be better. Going interplanetary was the smartest thing he ever did. 
Why, we got more attractions and menageries than you can shake a stick at. Three hours later, the giant space station's main dining room, Buddy introduces the amazing Daphne to Star Lab's librarian, Ingrid Tassel. Oh, Daphne, this is Ingrid. She'll be coming to Barnum 5 with me tomorrow. Glad to know you, Ingrid. Hello, Daphne. Buddy's told me so much about you that it's nice to finally see you, uh, in the flesh. Yeah, well, uh, I'm happy to say there's a lot of flesh to see. <laughs> <laughs> Will you have lunch with us, Daphne? I'd really love to, honey, but uh, i got to be getting back. The next morning, as Buddy and Ingrid jet toward Barnum 5 aboard the Marathon Alpha, Otto Starshine and Daphne stand on the midway of Otto's interplanetary carnival, watching the gaffers, roustabouts, and kinkers prepare for another day-long performance. Say, are we going ahead with what we talked about last night? The fourth ring? Mm. Yes, it's a wonderful idea, but it requires a good deal of preparation. So we had better take Buddy and Ingrid to Madame Disha the moment they arrive. Gotcha. No, Disha. Gotcha. Two hours after leaving Star Lab, Buddy lands the Marathon Alpha at a small spaceport near Otto's Carnival. Fifteen minutes later, Buddy and Ingrid are escorted down the midway to Otto's office, a large red and gold circus wagon surrounded by neon flagpoles that fly the multicolored banners and pennants of 20 alien worlds. Hey, hi, Otto. Oh, Hello, Buddy. Buddy. What? Hi, you look Buddy. great, Otto. Just great. <laughs> well, it's been a long time, Buddy. Too long. Well, what do you two think of the place so far? Oh, it's, oh, it's terrific. Oh, I can't get over it. Excellent. Glad to hear it, kids. Glad to hear it. But if you think what you've seen so far is terrific, prepare yourself for lots more. Because you ain't seen nothing yet. And now, the conclusion of the Madonnas of Zanzibar Alpha on Alien Worlds. <laughs> Listen, Dad, if we ain't seen nothing yet, what do you say we get out there on the old midway and have at it? Oh, yes. There's so much going on out there, I can't imagine how we'll be able to see even half of it in only one day. Don't worry about having enough time, Ingrid. Why, between now and midnight, you're both going to see such mind-boggling sights that we'll probably have to ship you back to Star Lab in an ambulance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ingrid? Yes, Otto? Sind Sie ein Deutscher? Oh, nein, Otto. Ich bin ein Highlander. Ah, geboren in der Stadt oder der Land? In der Stadt, Sanden, 20 Kilometer nord unter Amsterdam. Du sprachst vorzüglich Deutsch. Oh, danke schön, Otto. Uh, do you have any idea what they're talking about, Dad? I sure do. Otto asked Ingrid if she was German, and she said no, she was Dutch. Then he asked if she was from the country or the city, and she said she was born in Zandam, a city north of Amsterdam. And when he complimented her on her German, Ingrid said, Thanks, Otto. She daffed me. I didn't know you understood German. Otto taught me. Buddy, Ingrid, I think it's time for you to meet Madame Disha. Who? Madame Disha, our resident mystic, a fortune teller from the planet of Heterodyne 4. She knows all. She sees all. You mean... Yes, Buddy. She sees all. Yeah, that could be a little embarrassing, couldn't it? Well, it all depends on where she looks. <laughs> Arriving at the circus planet of Barnum 5, Buddy and Ingrid are escorted through the main gate of Otto Starshine's interplanetary carnival of thrilling wonders and taken to Otto's office. A large red and gold circus wagon. <laughs> Ten 
Ten minutes later, Buddy, Ingrid, Otto, and the amazing Daphne leave Otto's wagon and walk down the midway toward the mysterious Madame Disha's tent. Meet the mysterious Madame Disha. Come, let us go inside. Good morning, Madame Disha. Hiya, Madame. Good morning, Otto. Daphne. Madame Disha, I would like to present... Ingrid Tassel and Buddy Grief. Uh, Daphne told you we were coming? Did she? I uh, have a good time, kids. Come on, Otto. Madame Disha will escort you back to my wagon when you are finished, Buddy. Uh, enjoy yourself. Okay, you, see Otto. you later. Please, sit here at the table. Buddy on this side, Ingrid on this side. Okay. Now, put your minds at ease. In a moment, the crystal ball will fill with light. When it does, join hands, look into the light, and concentrate. Good body. Look, it's beautiful. What do you see, my dear? A sky, a lovely red sky, filled with clouds, white and blue clouds. And beneath the clouds? Birds, hundreds of golden birds drifting on the wind. And beneath the birds? A valley filled with all the colors of autumn. And in the center of the valley? A river, a singing silver river. And does not the river remind you of a poem you once wrote, buddy? Yes, a poem about birth and being alive in the fragile body of a newborn child. And does not the second verse of the poem mention a singing river? Yes. Touched by silver waters, wrapped in velvet clothes, we sleep in ivory cradles where the singing river flows. And did not Buddy read this poem to you three months ago, Ingrid? Yes. And did not the verse that mentions winter cause you to weep? Yes. We aged in golden afternoons were old when winter came. And when we died as ancient children, we knew no one was to blame. What do you see near the river? A meadow. A huge meadow filled with strange blue flowers. And when the sunlight touches the flowers, their, their petals shed tears. And in the center of the meadow, statues, enormous crystal statues of beautiful young women on their knees, praying. They are Madonnas, sad Madonnas. And why are they sad? I don't know. Ingrid? They are sad because there is no one they can tell their secrets to. What secrets, Ingrid? The Madonnas watch over an alien library that lies beneath the ground they kneel on. How is it that you sense their sadness? Because when no one comes to learn the secrets of the knowledge I watch over in the library on Star Lab, I am sad. And where do the Madonnas wait, Ingrid? Zanzibar Alpha. The lost world of Zanzibar Alpha. of Otto Starshine's interplanetary carnival comes to a close. And the next time your friends ask you where they can have the time of their lives, say this, from the sands of Mars to the distant stars, there's no greater show in the universe or anywhere else than Otto Starshine's 
interplanetary carnival of thrilling wonders. Thank you and good night. I don't know, Daphne. I think it's a toss-up between Madame Disha's hallucinatory crystal ball and glamorous Wanda's mammoth torsax. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Ingrid? What did you enjoy most? Oh, the artificial comet that went zooming around inside the big top. I thought it was wonderful when it exploded and all the clowns came floating down inside a fire hoop. Well, here's the good old Marathon Alpha. Hey, wait a minute. Who put that poster on the tail fin? Well, it's probably one of our ballyhoo boys, buddy. I don't know how they do it, but they always manage to get one of our posters on anything that'll stand still. It looks nice. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Well, we'd better get aboard, Ingrid. Hey, thanks again, Otto. We had a terrific time. Oh, yes, it was just wonderful. Oh, good, Bye, buddy. Good. Good. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye, Jim. Wake up. What? Oh, buddy. Are we home? No, Ingrid, we're not home. I don't know where we are. What? Doesn't the onboard computer know where we are? It does, but I don't. The computer's feeding a star matrix to the navigational display. But I don't recognize any of the proximity coordinates. Buddy... There's a planet out there. I know. We drifted into its gravitational field just before you woke up. We're lost, Ingrid. Buddy, what's happening? The planet's pulling us down. We're out of control. Sky. A lovely red sky. Filled with clouds. Wiping through clouds. Buddy! A river. A singing silver river. Ingrid! Buddy, please don't let go of my hand. Five, the Marathon Alpha mysteriously drifts off course and becomes trapped in the gravitational field of an alien planet whose surface is obscured by white and blue clouds. Suddenly, an energy force lashes out from the clouds and pulls the Marathon Alpha down through the planet's misty red atmosphere. A moment later, the shuttle crashes on the edge of a peaceful meadow filled with strange blue flowers. Flowers that weep golden tears as the sunlight touches them. Oh, buddy, it smells wonderful, like jasmine and lilac. Yeah. Not a scratch anywhere. There aren't even any skid marks on the ground. It's like some giant invisible hand just... Buddy, look! On the other side of the... The river. The Madonnas. Hmm? Buddy, what's happening to us? Everything we saw in the crystal ball is coming true. Uh, it can't be. Or maybe it can. Come on, let's get a closer look. outline on the knee of the statue. There's, there's some kind of door here. Buddy, Madame Disha's crystal ball, the underground library. This must be the entrance. Let's go in. Oh, I don't know, Ingrid. It looks pretty dark down there. 
For all we know, there might be a giant spider or something lurking around. Oh, come on. Where's your sense of adventure? Well, all right. But you stay here until I make sure it's safe. Okay. Be careful. Don't worry about a thing, Ingrid. I've got something that makes me invincible. Your dauntless courage? No, my trusty blaster. I'll be right back. Yikes! legs. I don't get it. You mentioned a big hairy spider and there it is. Is it dead? Yeah. I want to see it. Ingrid. I want to see it, buddy. All right. Oh, buddy, it's horrible. How could such a thing... What happened? Where did it... Where did it go? The spider has returned to your imaginations. Wh who's there? Each Madonna represents a various aspect of knowledge. The one who kneels above us symbolizes knowledge through imagination. I am Yana, her soul. Why can't we see you? True knowledge has no form. Imagination has neither shape nor physical substance. But you know that, don't you? Yes, I, I suppose I do. Uh, but if I already knew the answer, why did I ask the question? Because those of us who devote our lives to knowledge are always aware of how little we know. And because of this awareness, we never stop learning. We never stop asking questions. What did you mean when you said the spider returned to our imaginations? The most negative aspect of imagination is its ability to invent irrational fear. When you suggested that a great spider might be present, you formed its image in your mind and reacted with apprehension. When you descended the stairs into this corridor, the spider appeared but only as a projection of your anxiety. But I saw the spider, too. What you saw was based on the sounds you heard, Ingrid. You heard Buddy cry out. You heard him fire his weapon and describe what had happened. Sounds. Only sounds. But then, sound has always been imagination's greatest stimulant. Yana, how did we get here? You arrive at a place by sincerely wanting to be in that place. A metal ship can transport you, or your imagination can transport you. In transporting yourself with your mind, you discover that true knowledge is in the journey, not the destination. But, but what about the door that opened up there? We couldn't have imagined that, because here we are. Are you? Where are you, Ingrid? A place of knowledge through imagination, you said. A metaphysical library. That door has existed since the beginning of time, Ingrid. And it will always be there for anyone who wishes to pass through it. Oh, oh Bobby. Ingrid, what's wrong? Oh, they don't know. So many of them don't know. The door, it leads to eternal summer. Yana? I have to leave you now, because this part of the journey is ending. Love each other as much as you love me. Yana! A lovely red sky, filled with clouds. 
white and blue cloud. We sleep in ivory cradles where the singing river flows. Zanzibar Alpha. Yana! The lost world of Zanzibar Alpha. Yana! Buddy, please don't let go of my hands. Buddy? Ingrid? Can you hear me? Where are we? Uh, Otto. Daphne. How you doing, kiddo? Ingrid, are you all right? What happened? How can we still be here? We crashed on Zanzibar Alpha. We saw the Madonnas. We talked to Yana. It happened in your minds. All of it. You and Ingrid have just experienced the fourth ring of my circus. The fourth ring? Yes. The magic light of Madame Disha's crystal ball. It gave you what no three-ring circus ever can. An unprecedented journey through your imagination with someone you care about very much. But the Madonnas, Zanzibar Alpha, where did those ideas come from? I invented them at the beginning of the light trance and passed them from my mind to yours. And what about Yana? Was she an invention too? Yana? The Madonna spirit we met after... after Buddy shot the giant spider that wasn't there. Yana was someone or something you created between yourselves. Uh, uh Buddy... You can let go of our hands now if you want to. The journey's over, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Daphne. After what we've been through together, I... I think the journey's just begun. He's right, Daphne. We ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> Madonna's of Zanzibar Alpha was written by Ron Thompson and starred Chuck Olson, Marilyn Schreffler, Linda Gary, Byron Kane, Christina Holland, and Ron Feinberg. Associate producer, Ron Thompson. Engineer, Stu Jacobs. Music director, Tom Rounds. Assistant to the producer, Jim Cook. Technical consultant, Peter Skye. Alien Worlds was created, produced, and directed by Lee Hansen. And so, until next week, this is Roger Dressler inviting you to join us for our next adventure, the Himalayan Parallel, from the elsewhere and elsewhen of Alien Worlds.